Hey team, today we're going to use GitHub Actions to deploy a Next.js app to Amazon S3. I'm Colby Fayok, and if this is your first time here, make sure you hit subscribe for future updates. GitHub Actions are a service from GitHub that allows us to automate code tasks right in our repositories. So using one of those actions, we're going to learn how to statically compile one of our Next.js apps and then deploy it to S3. S3 is an object storage service from Amazon AWS that allows us to store files and retrieve them where we can even turn them into websites. So to get started, we're going to create a new app locally using Next.js. So in my terminal, I'm going to run yarn create next app and we'll say my static website. And once that's done, we can navigate into that directory and we can run our dev server. We can open it up in our browser and we can see our new app. If we run yarn build out of the box with the Next.js app, it's going to go through some steps and statically compile our site, but it's not going to export it into files that makes it available for us to use. So inside our package.json for our Next.js app, we want to also add to the build command we're gonna say and next export. And now if we test that, we can see that Next.js still did the same steps for compiling our app, but it also exported it. And we can see that by going back to our code editor and looking at the out directory, which now has our HTML. So the next thing we wanna do is create an S3 bucket. So we wanna log into our AWS account, which is free to sign up. Then we wanna to navigate to S3, where if you already visited it before, you can find it there, or you can search for S3 and we can navigate there. As you can see, I'm searching for my, but if you are in here for the first time, you probably don't have any buckets. So the first thing we want to do is create a new bucket and I'm going to call it Colby's static website Next.js and we want to make sure that this bucket name is globally unique and for the region you can set it to really whatever you want since I'm in the Northeast United States I'm going to leave it at US East and then I'm going to click create and now I can see that my bucket is created I can navigate to it and we can see that it's empty next we want to also prepare this to actually host a static website so we're first going to go over to properties static website hosting where we're going to say use this bucket to host a website. We're going to put in the index.html file for the index document and we can put it as the error document for now and click save. Over in the permissions tab, we want to make sure that we unblock all public access so that we can actually access our bucket. Then we type confirm to confirm that. Then we want to go to the bucket policy where I definitely don't know this policy by heart. So I usually go to the S3 bucket for static hosting from the Amazon AWS docs. And then I scroll down, I find the policy that they publicly recommend. I copy that right into my policy. And the last thing we want to do is make sure that we update example.com to our buckets website. So in my instance, it's Colby's static website, Next.js, and then hit save. So now that we actually have our bucket configured to work for a website, let's test this out. So inside of the directory where I have all my files, we can see it my out directory with all the Next.js assets. And I'm going to take all of those and I'm going to drag it right into S3 and I'm going to upload them. Now, if we go back to properties and our static website hosting area, we can see that we have this endpoint, which is where our static site is actually hosted. So if we open that up in a new tab, we can see that we have our Next.js site. So now that we have our site, we want to actually make this so this can update anytime we push changes to Git. So the first thing I'm going to do is go over to GitHub and I'm going to create a new repository and I'm gonna call it Colby's static website, similar to before. I'm gonna leave it public and hit create repository. The great thing is GitHub gives you the commands that you need to run right inside of the terminal. So I'm gonna copy these commands. I'm gonna run git branch minus main just so that I can start off from main. I'm gonna add the remote origin. I'm gonna also commit my changes for our build script. And then we're gonna push that out. And once that's done, I can refresh my GitHub page and we can see our new repository. So now that we have our GitHub repo, we can actually get started with our actions. So I'm gonna navigate over to the actions tab and I'm gonna click set up a workflow yourself or alternatively, you can start off with a Node.js one. And as you can see, once that loads, we have a basic skeleton of what we wanna do, but I'm gonna quickly remove all these comments just to make it a little easier to read and see what we're doing. So looking at this again, there's a couple things I'm gonna do. I'm gonna rename this to deploy. I'm gonna change the name also to deploy. We wanna make sure that it only runs when things get pushed to main so that it's not trying to rebuild and deploy the main branch for pull requests. Then for our jobs, we want to leave it on Ubuntu latest. Hopefully I said that right. We want to also make sure that it checks out the code and we're going to remove these other scripts for now since we're not going to use them. And once we have that ready, we can commit that right to the main branch. And as soon as we commit that and go to the actions tab, we can see that it already kicked off a new instance of that deployer where we can go into it and see what's going on. Once it's available, we can select the build on the left in our sidebar. And we can also see that it's actually going through and checking out our code to make it available inside this action. So now that we have this code actually getting checked out, we want to actually run it and build it. So to modify our deploy script, we're going to move into the Git hub workflows folder where we're going to open back up that deploy.yaml and we're going to edit it 
And underneath the checkout, I'm gonna add a few new commands. I'm gonna tidy this up a little bit. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the setup node action, which we're gonna set it up for 12 for now. You can change that to whatever you'd like. We're gonna also install yarn globally. That way we can actually use it within our action. We're gonna install our all of our dependencies and make sure that we use a frozen lock file so it doesn't try to upgrade anything. And then we're finally gonna run yarn build, which is gonna build our website. And similar to before, we can see that commit already trigger a new job, which we can move into and we can watch it build. And once it's finished, we can see that it's gone through all those steps. It's installed yarn, it's ran yarn install and yarn build. And if we actually look in the logs for yarn build, we can see that it's done the same thing that happened inside of our terminal where it created our site and it also exported it to the out folder. So now that we're actually building our project, we wanna take it to the next step and we wanna upload those results straight to S3. To do this, we're gonna use a GitHub action called configure AWS credentials, where this action will set up our secret keys and access keys, which makes it available to use right inside of the GitHub action. This means we can run any command we want from the AWS CLI and we can make it work. Alternatively, there's a few options like this S3 sync option, which allows us to interface directly with AWS S3 through this action, but by using the CLI, we're gonna be able to have a little bit more flexibility and be able to add on to that later if we want. So inside of my action code, I'm gonna copy and paste in a few additional steps. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna run that configure AWS credentials GitHub action, and we're gonna pass in a few parameters. We're gonna pass in AWS access key ID and secret access key. We're gonna pull those from GitHub secrets on the repository, that way that they're not stored inside the code itself. And then finally, we're gonna set a region of US East one, and that can be whatever AWS region you wanna use. But again, since I'm in the Northeast United States, I'm gonna use the one closest to me. Then I'm gonna go ahead and just commit that for now. So now that we're defining those secrets inside of our file, we wanna actually set those secrets. So first thing we wanna do is go over to settings, and then we can go to the secrets tab where we'll be ready to add our secrets. These secrets are gonna come from AWS, where we're gonna set up access keys in order for our account to access AWS programmatically. So inside the console, I'm gonna go up to the dropdown where it has my username, and I'm gonna go down to my security credentials and select that. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to the access keys section, and we're gonna click create access key. Inside the screen, we have two keys. We have our access key, and then we have our secret access key. After closing this dialog box, we're never gonna be able to see this secret access key again. So we wanna make sure we either download this CSV file or save these keys separately so that we still can access them later. Also, just of note, I'm gonna delete these keys later, but make sure you never expose these keys so that somebody can't compromise your account with them. So step-by-step, step, I'm gonna take the access key and I'm gonna go over to secrets. I'm gonna create a new secret and that's gonna be called AWS access key ID. And I'm gonna paste in my value and click add secret. Similarly, I'm gonna grab my secret key. I'm gonna go back over to secret. I'm gonna add that as a new secret. That one's gonna be called AWS secret access key. I'm gonna paste in the value and click add secret. And now that we're defining our secrets, we can finally add the CLI command that'll sync this project up to S3. So we're gonna specify run and we're gonna say AWS S3 sync. We're gonna specify the out directory, which is where we want it to pull the files from. And then we're gonna specify the bucket with S3 colon slash slash and then the bucket name, which in my instance was Colby's static website next.js. And now if I commit that file right to the main branch, we can see that our last deploy actually failed because we didn't have the secret keys in there yet. But if we go to our new deploy, and once it's finished successfully, we can go through and we can see that it ran all of our commands, even the configure AWS credentials. And it also ran that AWS S3 sync command where we can go through and we can see that it uploaded all the files that we had from that out directory. If we go back to our bucket now, we can see that the files are the same, but that's because we haven't made any changes. So let's test that out. Inside the code, inside of our app on the homepage, I'm gonna simply change this to Colby's Next.js app. And if I look in the browser, we can see the updated title. And now if I commit that change and commit it, Colby's title, and push that out to GitHub. We can see that our new build kicked off and we can see that it successfully went through all the build steps, especially the AWS S3 sync command. And if you paid attention closely, we can also see that we have a new last modified date. But now if we open back up our endpoint for static web hosting in our browser, we can see our new title, Colby's Next.js app, and that was updated automatically by pushing that to GitHub. So if you follow along with me, you learned how to automatically deploy your Next.js app to S3 using GitHub Actions. GitHub Actions are an awesome way to automate code tasks, and this is just another way that we can use it to automatically deploy our site. If you like this video, make sure you hit thumbs up and subscribe for future updates. Thanks for watching.